Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of this all, and we've got all the preliminaries out of the way. So we're going to talk now about the money manager and how that money manager actually works in your favor. So first what we're going to do is we're going to open up the money manager. So we go to trade money management planner. First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create one. So I'm going to just call this one, uh, we'll call this stocks, right? Because if I know that I'm going to trade, you know, the, the, the same thing every single time, right, all I need is stocks. Now, if you get more in-depth where you're trying to um, uh, step out of trades, you're doing some more uh, integrated, some more high-level things, we'll get into that as well. But for just this simple project here, we'll talk about just stocks for now. Right. We'll say OK. And then the first thing we're going to do is it gives you four simple questions. Quantity. How many shares do you want? How many shares do you want this money manager to manage for you as far as the trade goes? And this this very simple level one, we're just going to say we want 100 shares. Right. Now, uh, speaking of this quantity, there's very important function here that we want to we want to also mention, and that is that when we go into the order defaults, right, we set up some defaults there to say that uh, depending on what you have set up in your orders defaults, these money management numbers are going to override that, right? So when we say that, if I have all my stocks set up for 500 and then I apply a money management strategy, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to, well, my money management strategy is set for 100. So it'll default back to that 100 unless you otherwise say. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So we're going to say we want a quantity of 100. Uh, then our profit target. So say now if we don't want a profit target, we can just say zero, right? And then it'll just ride. It'll just keep riding up, and hopefully it continues to go up. And then as soon as we made a whole lot of money and our stop finally meets it, we can get out, or we can set a profit target. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set a profit target. We're going to say that we want to make 50 cents a share. And then lastly, what we're going to look at is our stop. What is how much money are we willing to lose on this trade? Should it go against us and still not be so upset that we get out of the market forever, right? And I'm kind of cheap. I'm one of those poor guys, and you know my money runs scared. So I always say that I'm going to lose about 15 cents per share in a trade, right? So then the last question is a, a stop strategy, and we're going to go into that in just a minute. So we're just going to leave it for right now, and we're going to say we like the settings here. We'll say close on that. And then when we apply that money manager, now I want you to look at something here. So first off, what we're going to do right here is I'm going to change this number to say to zero, right? And that's just a quantity. So if we didn't do anything and we tried to place an order, it's going to look at that quantity as to the number of shares we want to buy. But when we go down here and we select a, a, our strategy stocks, you notice that it automatically puts 100 shares in there because that's what our strategy is set up for. And if we wanted to change that, say that we have a strategy and we want to make it a different number, we can say 500 or 100 or 1,000 in there, and our strategy would simply just make adjustments for the number that we put in. But if we're comfortable and we want our number to stay at 100, we're going to go ahead, we'll take our strategy away, we're going to put the strategy back on, and it'll always default to 100. And then when we place our order, so for example, now if we were to come over here and say click on buy market, there we go. You'll see that when on our order ticket, and I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see it. I'll go below first so you can zoom in. You'll see that it automatically does that by 100, right? It's taken on the quantity that we have in our, our money management strategy, right? The same as if we go above our strategy, right? It's going to give us that by 100. So the quantity will always remain the same unless we change it. So now when we want to place our order, right? Say we do a buy market, for example, we take our strategy. When we enter in, you'll see that it immediately puts in our profit target as well as our stop loss. Remember, if we bring our money manager, there we go. So if we move this up to the top, right? We did a, we did a profit target of 50. So if we come here, 55 plus 50 is 5305 on our profit target, and if we subtract 15 from our entry price, that takes us to 5244 would be our stop. So that's what this would happen once our initial order executes, our profit and our stop targets are initiated, and we're protected from the minute we enter into position. Fairly simple. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close that one out. So now let's go a little more in depth with regard to the money management strategy. Right. So first off, we have our 100, but say that you're, well, you know what? I'm feeling kind of gutsy, and uh, I think that this is really going to go up, but I want to be able to take some money off the table at the same time. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a level to it. All right. And this time we're going to say, well, 
we're going to get an additional 100 shares of quantity. And this time we're going to kind of move our profit target up so we can get 100 out of this. And then the last one is our stop. In this case, I'm still going to remain with that. And we're going to lose 15 cents on a trade. So we're going to go ahead and keep that 15 cents. So now we're, we're saying that we want to, we have two levels of a trade here now, right? We have, uh, basically we're entering two trades, right? We have our, it's going to be for 200 shares, but we're saying that if we get 50 cents, we want to close out. This gives us an opportunity to take some money off of the table and still be, you know, make it kind of a profitable trade if it continues up and reach that next part, right? And so the way that this would look on our charts then would be pretty much the same as it, the first one, except the only difference is, is now we have two profit targets. So here what we're going to do is we need to go away from our strategy, come back so that it once again increases our numbers, right? We want to make sure quantity is for 200. So we come back, we do a buy market. There we go. Now we have a profit target 50%, 50 above, and then 100 above would be our second profit targets that we have set up, right? And down below that, you'll see we have our stop. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. You see how it says 200 with that S on the end? And what that means is that we have 200 shares split. It means that if this we decided to move our stop, and in this case we will, we'll drag this down just a tad, you'll see that our, our 200 moves with us and it releases, right? So that just, so that, and generally what will happen in this case is as we, we start to move in our trade, uh, we can break off the different stops, okay? So that's the two levels of the, the money manager strategy. And if, once again, you can have as many levels as you want. So if you, you buy 500 and you want to do five levels of the trade, you just simply keep adding the levels on there and putting your profit targets and your stop targets. Now, if you decide that you don't necessarily want to keep the profit targets, once again, you can set those to zero and or to none. And what it'll do is it'll allow you to go ahead and not have that profit target, but still have the stops. And as the price goes up, you then can kind of control uh, where the stops will go. You can either drag and drop them in different positions, or you can uh, you can use what we call the stop strategies to to better manage stops. So we're going to talk to you about those stop strategies now. All right. So under stop strategies, what we're saying here is that if the trade starts going in our favor and you don't want to kind of hang out at the computer the whole time to, to watch it, you can set it up so that the stops will automatically move in your favor. So there's three different types of stops that you can do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to add one first. And then I'll talk to you about all three of the different types here in just a minute. So we're just going to put in, we'll just call it stop. Very simple. Stop. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'll tell you, first off, is the different types of stops. The first one is going to be a trailing stop. The trailing stop is just that. So as your price goes up at certain intervals that you, you set in advance, you can have that stop trail you, trail behind your trail behind your the movement. In this case, so if we select the trailing stop, right, it's going to ask that first question of trigger. When do you want the stops, when do you want this trailing stop to actually initiate and start moving along? That's going to be your trigger. So say we say if we can get 10 ticks into the money, then we want that you want that trailing stop to start moving, or 15 ticks. It's totally up to you on that number, right? It's what you're comfortable with. In this case, I'm going to say if I can get 15 ticks into the money, I want my trailing stop to, to start moving along. Now, the next question it's going to ask is, okay, well, you want the trailing stop to move. Where do you want it to move to? Now, remember that the stop is always going to be based on the last traded price, right? So our, our entry, our, our exit strategy, these numbers here are going to be based on our, our execution price, right? But all of our stops are going to be based on last traded price. So on our stop, we're saying, well, how far behind your, the, the, the last traded price do you want that stop to move to? And I'm always kind of crazy. I say, I'll, We'll go crazy today. I'm going to say I want it to be 20 ticks. In this case, so if it goes up 15, I want my stop to, to move 10 ticks above that so that I'm 20 ticks below the last traded price. And then the next one is going to be now, how often do you want that trailing stop to move up? Right? We've initiated it. You've got 15 ticks. It initiated. We moved our stop up to its new stop point. Now, how often after that do you want it to move? And once again, that's going to be frequency. Frequency just means how often should it move? And we're talking once again about ticks. One would be every tick it goes up, move my stop up. If we say frequency of two, we're saying that it has to go two ticks in the money before the stop will move, right? So on and so forth. So in this case, we're going to say, I want it to go 
two ticks. So every two ticks more into the money, the stop that that stop should move up once again two ticks to follow it along. All right, trailing stop. The next type of stop, and we're going to go ahead. We'll, we'll add another stop here. Oh, enter. The next type of stop is what we call a fixed stop. All right, I got to stop selling stock. There we go. A fixed stop. We're going to say there a fixed stop has two questions, right? Whereas our trailing stop had multiple questions, the three questions of trigger, stop, and frequency. The fixed stop just simply has two, and that's going to be when do you want it to trigger? Once again, how many ticks into the money do you want your stop to now initiate and move? And for this one, I'm going to say the same thing. I always do 15. And then in this case, for our stop, now there's one thing to remember about a fixed stop that it only moves once, right? After it's moved, it's finished. It's it's kaput, it's 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 tired, it's basically retired. So it's gonna you need to be sure where you want it to go. And this in this case you can set it so that it goes above that entry price, right? That way at least the trade becomes profitable. But then just remember that it's not going to move anymore after that. Anything that happens with that stop after that is going to be manually done by you. So I'm going to say here I want it to go 10 ticks below the last traded price. Once again, stops are all based on the last traded price. And that would be a fixed stop. So those are the two questions. It would be all done. Then the last type of stop, enter here, our last type of stop is going to be what we call a break even. I shorten that for BE, break even. And what the break even stop does, there it is, break even. What break even does is simply allows you at, at that once again that trigger, when do you want it to initiate? And what it does is it moves right up to the price in which you entered the, the trade. So your execution price becomes your new stop once that break even has triggered. So we'll say in this case, if I can get 20 into the money, then I want it to jump to break even. That way, if it comes back, well, I won't lose anything. I didn't gain anything, but I didn't lose anything on the trade either. All right. So those are the three different types of stops. I'm going to change this stop here to what we call trailing. So I can rename these as well. So if I put in a bad name, something I don't like, I can always go back and rename it or delete it, however, I, whatever I want to do there. And the cool thing here is you don't necessarily have to do three different stops. You can combine stops as well. So, for example, so I'm going to say here, we're going to add one more. I'm going to just call this a combo. Combo, right? And in my combo here, I can say, well, I want to have first a break even, right? So if I can get, say, if I can get 25 ticks into the money, I want I want to break even. I want it to move up to where I executed into the trade, right? So I'm at break even. But then I can say I want to add another target to that. And I can choose whether that be a fixed stop or a trailing stop. In this case, I'm going to say trailing stop. And I'm going to say, but if I can get an additional, say, five ticks in, which would then make it 30 ticks into the money, I want my stop to now move from that break-even point to 15 ticks below the last traded price. And then every, and I'm going to say one on this one. And then every time it goes up, I want that trailing stop to move with it. I want it to follow along. Now let's see what some of these different stops would look like if we were to actually do some trading. Okay, so now, now that we have a, a, a strategy in place, we can then add a stop to that. All right? In this case, we're going to actually do two different ones here. We're going to use our two, our single money management strategy. I'm going to add one more level to it. I'm going to say 100 here. Oops. Uh, profit target is going to be 150. And this one will, will be a little more dangerous. We're going to say 20 here just so that we can uh, see how this is going to work. And then we're going to then, we can apply different stops to it. So with our first one, we're not going to add any type of stop to our first one. If we can get 50 ticks in, we're well, actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead. We're going to take our first one. If we get 15 ticks in, we're going to take it to break even, right? So if we get 15 ticks in on, on the first, our first trade, then we're going to go to break even. On the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to select here is going to be our our combination, right? That's the one we set up here, combo, right? Which is if we can get 25 ticks into the money, it's going to move to break even. And then if we get 30 ticks into the money, our trailing stop is going to kick in. And every one tick, it'll move it to 15 below. And then on this last one, we're just going to make this a trailing stop, right? So we should have two that are moving along. One's going to go every other tick, and the other one should tick every single time. And let's see how that works out for us, okay? 
and that's called stock. So we're going to go down here to our strategy. We're going to go ahead and select stock. Once again, it creates that 300 for us. I'm going to scrunch this together here. We'll see how this works out for us. We're going to now do, say, a, uh, let's see, do, do, do. we'll do a buy, well, actually, we'll use the buy symbols here. And we're going to go ahead, we'll go just a tad bit below. There we go. So now we see how our order is going to look, right? Before our order actually initiates, it's going to look like this on our chart, right? A buy limit, 300 shares. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to then hopefully see the price come down, meet where we want it to meet, and then go in our favor. So if we were to pull this down just a smidgen, there we go. We're now entered in, right? So now we can look at our order, right? We have our first profit target at 88, our second profit target, our three profit targets, right? At 150, 150 trades in, right? And if we scroll down a little bit, you see that we have our 200 split, right? Which is our first stop, 15 and 15, and then our 100, which is 20 ticks off of our entry price, right? And then we would hope then, as we sit here and watch, that our pro our trade would go in our favor at some point. All right? We don't want it to go against us because if we go against us, the cool thing here is that it it's what we call one cancels another. So if one if one of our orders that hit, it cancels out the one on the opposite side of that. So in this case, if we were to this trade were to go against us and it were to come down to the 52.23, then two of our profit targets would cancel out because our stop has been hit and it closes us out. Then that only one remaining would be that 100 in hopes that maybe it came back and went in our favor. So in this case, we'll go ahead. We're going to hopefully see this thing kind of go in our favor. It starts to jump up. Remember that what we're looking for on the first part here is 25 ticks, right? If we can get 25 ticks in the money, there it goes. Our first one just started moving, all right? Our, so our first stop, it canceled our initial stop, and it has moved into our stop strategy. And then if we could then continue to get it to move every two ticks, we should get it to actually move in our favor. And I don't see it actually moving here, but we're going to watch it for a minute and see what happens. All right. So as we continue up, there we go. It's moving. And it should be every two ticks. I know it's actually, oh, we'll see what happens here. There we go. Oh, we had to get to the break-even point first. Now we go. Now, as you can see, every two ticks into the money, we should get one, and every one tick, we should continue to get, there we go. And as the trade comes either in our favor or against us, our stop will continue to follow us. But if then all of a sudden it goes in the opposite direction, it goes against us, and we hit a stop, once again, it should take out one, or, if it hits a stop, it should take out a profit target at the same time, all right? So as it kind of sits there, we'll hope for the best. Proceeds up, let's see what would happen. So if this were to come down, Right, and hit maybe say at one of our, our stops. Right, we didn't make as much as we wanted to, but we, you know, we would at least be able to trade another day, right? We're still profitable in the trade if it were to fall down. And hopefully it'll come down. Just need to come down four pennies. Kind of hard on us today. Let's see that. Let's see if we can get him to come down. There we go. That should do it. There we go. All right, so then if it comes down, it hits one of our profit targets, right? We can now squeeze in our thing here. You'll see that now we only have two profit targets left, right, because one of our stops has been hit. Then, once again, maybe it comes against us. Now, we're still 38. We're still doing okay, right? We've made a little bit of money on the trade. And then if it starts running against us, right, we would call that pullback where it closed out on us. That's why we left that little wide gap. It proceeds up. Hopefully, it hits our next profit target. We can close out of one of our stops and then so on and so forth. Once again, when it does pull back like this though, we need to remember that it has to make up all that ground before the trailing stop will start moving again. All right, so here we go with our third one. We'll say all of a sudden uh, Yellen starts talking and look at that, all of a sudden the market starts running up. There's our, our trailing stop starts moving with us. And remember, we only have that one break even in there, all right? So it, that one's never gonna move again, all right? And then hopefully we hit our profit target and we're good to go. So that's how the money management strategy would kind of work in your favor to be able to allow you to, one, be on the golf course and be able to still trade successfully, right? So once our, our, our initial orders are executed, then the money management strategy takes over from there and then monitors our trade and moves our stops for us as we go along.